we're back and I'm just gonna walk through what I did with the electrical really quick. So, really quick, I am not an electrician. If you have seen some of our other Ford E350 camper van videos, you'll see our goal is simple, functional, and cost-effective systems. I don't wanna use the word cheap, but you could use the word economical. First off, I am 35 years old, I am divorced, and I live in a van down by the river. We decided to build this simple electrical system that cost roughly $850, which was a lot more than I wanted to spend. We have no plans to use air conditioning, refrigeration, or heat, or anything like that, so this is more than enough for charging computers, cameras, and things while we're camping. We also did not include solar panels in this system because the engine would have to be off for more than a week for us to drain the battery, which isn't going to happen anytime soon for us. It's possible to add solar to this system later if needed. This is my first DC electric system, a little different than electric in the house. So if you're going to do your own electrical, just be really careful. These uh, 12 volt DC systems can hurt you if you mess up or do something incorrectly. I ran a four gauge battery cable and I put it in this conduit right here. It's actually red. So one thing you are going to have to buy is a battery lug crimper. Um, so this is the positive or the hot side and this is the neutral side. Whenever you're working on a battery, make sure you always disconnect the uh, neutral, sorry, the negative, the negative terminal first before you start working on the positive. So to go to the other battery, this is our four gauge battery cable. And this is a heat shrink over a four gauge terminal lug there. So you do need a proper tool to crimp that on. And you can either solder or crimp it on. There's lots of videos that'll show you how to do that. And then it just runs over here. And this was the easiest place I was able to run it through into the cab. At first I was gonna run this battery cable underneath the car but decided against that for a couple reasons one if you run the battery cable underneath the car there's the exhaust down there um, so it can get too hot if it gets next to the hot engine or the hot exhaust you could potentially melt this cable cause an electrical fire um, so you don't want to do that the other reason is if you run it under the car it can you know move around with all the other moving parts and chafe and possibly start a fire like that as well. So instead I opted to run it through the um, bulkhead here and there's a grommet, a rubber grommet where I ran it through there so it's not chafing against the metal. So now we'll go inside the car and I'll show you where I ran it. Okay so it's kind of hard to see here but basically the battery cable runs behind everything over here and I had to take this panel off and this panel off and it runs with a couple zip ties holding it and I kept it in conduit through there and those panels are pretty easy to take off this is really easy to take off the footstep coming into the door so it runs underneath there up into this pillar and then I'll show you on the other side where it goes after it goes into there so it runs up this pillar here we're behind the driver's seat now and up through there and there you can see it so here is that four gauge battery cable this is about 30 feet of cable so we probably could have gotten away with seven gauge or six gauge but uh ended up going with four gauge you have to use a table to see how much voltage drop you're going to have for the distance of the cable run but four gauge is plenty for us and then ran it across here just used some uh uh, wire clamps that are just screwed into the metal with uh, self-tapping screws and it comes down all the way to the other side so the four gauge cable comes underneath here and then into another captive terminal right here so again you're gonna need the uh, terminal crimper into this ANL fuse block and then the four gauge comes out again out of the fuse block and then it goes into this 140 amp voltage sensitive relay smart battery isolator 
and what this thing does is it isolates this battery, the house battery, from the starting battery so that when you're using stuff back here, if you happen to drain your house battery charge, you won't drain the starting battery and you can still start the vehicle. Um, you could add a switch in here in case you ever drained your starting battery. Um, I didn't choose to do that. I chose to just keep it simple and just you have the isolator. Uh, also notice that the isolator is grounded to bare metal here. There's a little bit of sheep wool on it, but it's grounded to bare metal. And whenever I'm grounding to bare metal, I use a star locking washer and a little dielectric silicone to keep it from rusting and make sure that connection stays stays good. One other thing on the smart battery isolator is it comes with a great set of installation instructions. Really useful when installing the whole system, really, if you just follow the instructions that come with this thing. Okay, so next, the 4-gauge wire, another 4-gauge wire leaves the isolator and goes to this post right here. So this is the positive terminal on this VMAX 125 amp hour AGM or absorbent glass mat battery. Um, and this thing was the most expensive part of the electrical system. There are cheaper, smaller batteries out there, but I went ahead and just got a larger battery for a, that can hold a little bit more charge. Over here, the negative terminal of the battery is then just attached to bare metal right over here. So again, with a locking washer and a self-drilling screw just onto bare metal. And you can test to make sure you've got a good connection there if you use a multimeter. So you'd set your multimeter to DC current, which is that symbol right there, versus AC current, alternating current. And then you would just touch the positive post with one of the prods and you'd take the negative one and find somewhere kind of far away from the battery to make sure that you're getting a good connection to the metal frame in the car. So we'll go ahead and test that right now. Okay, so I found a spot of bare metal that's far away from the battery. So I put the negative on there. And the positive is on the battery terminal. Okay, so right now we're reading just a little over 12 volts, so we know we're getting a good connection with that negative terminal. If you weren't getting a good connection there, obviously you wouldn't get anything if you were touching the negative terminal elsewhere in the middle. Okay, so back to the positive terminal on the battery, we've got two 8 gauge wires leaving. And one of them is going to this fuse block where the DC loads are coming out. But this other 8 gauge wire is going over here to this 30 amp inline fuse and then that goes over to the AC inverter. It's a 600 watt clean sign uh, AC inverter where you can plug in anything that would normally plug into a wall outlet in a house. And that inverter is also grounded to bare metal. And then the other, back to the other eight gauge wire here, goes to the fuse block and there's two five amp fuses. And then one of these 14 gauge wires goes to LED lights and the other 14 gauge wire is going to the max air fan. So those are the DC loads. Uh, fairly simple and it's pretty nice because it's all just in this kind of wasted space anywhere, anyway, right over here by the uh, wheel hub. Uh, the fan, the positive wire is actually the black wire. I've just kind of got things duct taped up for now until we get it paneling up. Um, this is a butt connector with heat shrink, so you can see that's going to the red positive, and they even labeled it positive right there. And then the white wire is the negative, grounded here with this self-tapping screw onto bare metal. The lights are just wired up right now with a little duct tape. Eventually they'll go into the paneling that we're gonna put up here. But I wanted to get all the wiring in before we do the paneling, so we don't have to mess around with that afterwards. My only concern with this system is that the AGM batteries like to be charged differently than the lead acid type batteries that are normally used in conjunction with alternators. In theory, this battery could last as long as eight years or 10 years, but only time will tell. If you found this video at all helpful, please give it a like and subscribe.